Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer here after Vanderbilt's 74 to 73 win over Texas A&M. It felt like Vanderbilt needed that one. It needed that shot as Ramon hit at the end. It needed that memorial magic that it felt for the first time this season. It needed that joy it experienced when Vanderbilt's bench ran on the floor and Memorial Gymnasium erupted uh, as Ezra Mignon was the hero tonight. 19 points for Mignon tonight on seven for 16 shooting. Five of those points were the biggest of the night, a corner three that put Vanderbilt up late and then the one that sealed it. Uh, Mignon went in the lane. I think it got touched by a Texas a defender. A lot of people thought it was an up and down, but it seemed like it was blocked and Mignon recovered it and made a circus shot to win it for Vanderbilt. And I think that was probably the best moment of its season to this point. And, I don't know that there's really any argument uh, towards that. We'll talk more about tonight's game, but I want to shout out our presenting sponsor, The Wash House. Are you dreading laundry days? It's stealing time to do the things you truly enjoy. Let the laundry professionals at The Wash House take care of that for you with two convenient locations in the greater Nashville area. Just drop off your dirty laundry and our professional attendants can give you back the one thing you can never have enough of, which is your time. Just drop off your dirty laundry. Oh, I already said that. Within 24 hours, you can pick up your nicely folded, fresh and clean laundry ready to be put away. Check out www.washhouseclean.com. Stop in the day and get your time back. I think Van Allen Lubin is another huge story tonight. Had 25 points on 9 for 13 shooting. Asked him post game, is that the best game of your Vanderbilt career? He said yeah, that is the best game. And I think Lubin really had everything working tonight. Scored Vanderbilt's first 11 points. Really got it going. Uh, and I think that was a big confidence point for him. He mentioned that a lot of games this year he started slow. Uh, it was complete opposite today. And I think Vanderbilt felt they had a chance just because of what Lubin did early. and the shots that he was hitting down the stretch. He hit an open three. He had a turnaround jumper in the mid range and it felt like he really was the player that uh, Vanderbilt kind of imagined they were getting. And he has been recently, has scored in double figures four out of the last five games. So Mignon's gonna be the story because of the big shots he hit in the timely periods. But I think Lubin should be another one that we really note. Uh, but again, Ezra Mignon really showed the veteran was the veteran tonight. I think he showed just about everything that we say that's good about him. All the toughness, all the fight, all the clutch playmaking. I think Ezra Mignon showed tonight he went out with an ankle injury. Uh, at one point in the second half, that's an ankle injury he's been dealing with all season, kind of spraining it, rolling it. Uh, and today was kind of a similar thing. He went out of the game though. And again, asked Jerry Stackhouse, can you put me back in? And uh, I think maybe in a little more suggestive terms than that, and Stackhouse put him back in and was rewarded for it with that three in the corner and then obviously the shot to win it. And I think that moment is one that Vanderbilt uh, really needed to feel and having a season like this to keep going. And I think this team has weathered a lot. Uh, and I think today it weathered a lot throughout the night. Uh, you felt like Vanderbilt at some points would have been down and out of this game. Texas A&M went on a 7-0 run, but never got more than a five point lead. Whenever Texas A&M punched, Vanderbilt punched back. and. I think that was another big story tonight was that Vanderbilt was able to kind of weather the storm and keep its head above water throughout a lot of the night. Just a really nice win against a team that uh, is top 40 in Ken Palm, is an offensive rebounding team that is among the best in the country. Vanderbilt made it look pretty human in that area. It's a deep front court with a lot of physicality and Vanderbilt matched it for a lot of the night, even with J.Q. Roberts at the five, even with Van Allen Lubin, who's a little undersized at the five. Vanderbilt was able to kind of prove that it wasn't just an early fluke by Van Allen Lubin that this was a game that it was meant to be in and it was a game that it could compete in. I think you saw Vanderbilt's not a super old team as a whole, but Ezra Mignon and Tyron Lawrence and even Van Allen Lubin to extent have been in situations like this and Mignon really came through when it mattered. So just a tremendous night for them uh, when it could have been a night that was kind of like all the others, uh, a night where Vanderbilt fell short and left the gym feeling disappointed. Tonight though, it felt like the old gym, uh, the old gym felt like it should have. And I think Vanderbilt fans have grown accustomed over the years to having nights like this at Memorial Gym. But tonight, I think was a story that Vanderbilt fans hadn't seen in a while and hadn't seen it since last season. But it was fitting that Mignon was the guy to kind of tie it together. He's been the heart and soul of this program really all season and probably for a lot of last season as well. He's the leader, Jerry Stackhouse mentioned that Mignon's a guy of character and faith and that uh, Vanderbilt has really followed his lead. And I think his leadership is something that Vanderbilt fans uh, maybe have taken for granted a little bit throughout the stretch. This team hasn't really quit in a lot of these games. And Mignon, I think, is uh, somebody that you can attribute that to. His toughness uh, when he went down today was huge. I think uh, him coming back in the game and even being more productive after he came back in was a huge story. Uh, and just 
the way Vanderbilt was kind of able to weather the storm tonight, I think was a lot of uh, due to Mignon and the way he was able to lead this team throughout a lot of the night. Evan Taylor also was pretty solid, another veteran. Five for nine from the field, um, 12 points. Vanderbilt didn't shoot it all that well, but it went to the line 18 times and it's veterans again. I'm gonna beat that drum all I can. It's veterans made veteran plays. You look at Ezra Mignon, you look at Ben Lubin, who feels like more of a mainstay than a veteran at this point, but Evan Taylor, another veteran, makes plays. Tyron Lawrence wasn't all that great tonight, but got some buckets when Vanderbilt needed him and did that 7-0 Texas A&M run, I think, early in the second half. And this was a game that, again, uh, it felt like Texas A&M is the older team that's been here a little more often, but Vanderbilt kind of took away that narrative from them uh, as it found a way to win against a team that's been there before and you felt like would probably come out with this game. I think Vanderbilt beat the odds tonight as eight and a half point underdogs and beat the odds late in that game. I think most people would be willing to bet on Texas A&M in that situation, but Vanderbilt found a way to win and found a way to look, make Texas A&M look like a more human team and kind of limited a little bit. Wade Taylor was really limited, had 18 points, but I think it was worse than that. Only had actually had one assist, four fouls, uh, shot five for 12 from the field. I think Bonyone, another thing about his game tonight, did a really nice job on Wade Taylor. And when he went out of the game, Wade Taylor started to get rolling a little bit. And even when he was in the game and he hit shots, I think they were tougher ones. So again, another testament to him. He was the story tonight. He was the hero tonight. But Vanderbilt as a whole, just being able to weather the punches and weather the storm uh, was a huge reason that this game was magical for them. And this game was a game that uh, was their first top 100 win of the year. It feels weird to say that, but this is far and away their best win of the season. I don't know that it's really even an argument at this point, just a really, really nice win for a team that uh, I think really needed it. Looking long term, is this a win that uh, kind of tells you the staff is staying or it's going to alter their decision making in the off season? I don't fully know that. I think it doesn't hurt them, but uh, I think, I don't know that it's going to be the end all be all. Where I do think it'll be really effective is uh, that this will probably put Vanderbilt in the 12-13 game. I don't think Mizzou's gonna catch up to them now. They're probably not gonna finish last in the league. Uh, and I think this is a win that kind of differentiates them from a really, really bad team to a team that uh, was semi-competitive uh, because you have a top 100 win now. You have two SEC wins. Prove that Mizzou wasn't just a fluke. So Vanderbilt, I think, doesn't have a whole lot to hang its hat on, but finds some things tonight where it can look and say, hey, we've done this before late in a late game situation. We have a win over a team that is on the tournament bubble. And I think another thing tonight, they played some spoiler tonight, Texas A&M. I don't know exactly where they were on the bubble, but had a top 40 net coming into the night. And this will probably drop them a seed line or two. So again, it's really significant in that matter. Vanderbilt's not gonna make the tournament. I don't know that's gonna get anywhere close with uh, the victory parade you throw for a game like this, but it certainly alters Texas A&M's uh, tournament hopes. And I think Vanderbilt, probably a low quad three game for them. So really gonna hurt them. And Vanderbilt helping itself a little bit down the stretch here in terms of seeding and just in terms of confidence. I think this team really hasn't quit and that's a testament to the guys that they have uh, within that locker room, like Ezra Von Yo, like Tyron Lawrence, guys who are able to kind of lead the ship of younger guys and uh, able to get them still in the right direction. I think there's been games where they've looked checked out a little bit at the end of blowouts or whatever, but as a whole, I think they've come ready to play for a lot of these games. And it's a testament to them and a testament to where this team's at. So is tonight. Uh, again, not a great place, but could be a lot worse. And I think we're finding out, out right now uh, that this could be a lot worse, but they have leadership in that locker room and uh, they have some confidence now that they can maybe use moving forward. So nice win for Vanderbilt. Not the end all be all, not going to put them in the tournament, not going to probably change what happens this offseason if something happens. But I think is a win that you look at and uh, draw some confidence from, and at the very least, uh, look at as a glimmer of light in a season full of darkness. So, thank you guys for watching. God bless. And uh, I'll be in Knoxville Saturday, opening days Friday. So, we'll have stuff there. I think Corbin talks tomorrow. Billy and Chris, or maybe just Billy, will be there. So, thank you guys for watching. God bless. Talk to you soon. Peace.